we've got uh, Pat Gelsinger here uh, to talk about uh, a fascinating topic, which is this moment right now where it appears like Google uh, could have overtaken, at least briefly, uh, NVIDIA or maybe at least challenging NVIDIA in some new way. And I'm so curious what you make of this news, this idea that Meta now maybe wants to actually do business with Google and buy their chips as opposed to NVIDIA chips. Well, I think everything uh, here is, uh, this is a big market. AI is such a hot space, but there's a lot of activities to bring other chips and other alternatives into the market. A whole flurry of startups that are uh, pursuing that market, you know, including a couple of mine at uh, Playground. But, you know, this move by uh, Google is a very meaningful one because they're now, they've built seven generations of their TPU and uh, their Tensor processor unit. But I also think, Andrew, it's super important, you know, they're not a commercial chip provider. You know, they've been doing this for their proprietary use and their proprietary data center. And thus, the partnership with Broadcom, you know, who's been their design partner, you know, is really critical if these, market, if these chips are going to come to market uh, at scale. So I think this is really good news for Google. I think it's great news for Broadcom. And ultimately, you know, NVIDIA is such a dominant leader in this space. Competition is good for all. And it just emphasizes how important AI is to our future. Do you think, Pat, though, I mean, look, you lived at Intel. You've seen this all play out. This idea that, you know, NVIDIA put out this, this fascinating tweet yesterday. A lot of people looked at that. They didn't understand what to, to make of it. <laughs> do you think in the end Meta will do business with Google? I mean, this, there's also this like frenemy, enemy, friend thing going on. And even some speculation right now, for example, that you could see, I don't, I don't know if you'll ever see NVIDIA try to take a stake in Meta, for example, or do something to try to keep that business in some new circular way. Well, hey, I think NVIDIA is an extremely, you know, technological, very competitive, very aggressive company. You know, that said, you know, Google, you know, the TPU and, uh, you know, what they've done over many generations now of that is a viable competitor. People are looking for alternatives to NVIDIA, just as you would expect them to. And the idea that Google is going to take aggressive steps to make that technology available to others, including Meta, you know, I think is good for competition. I think that's part of what the tweet from NVIDIA is indicating. We enjoy competition. But I think the Broadcom piece of that, making it commercially available, you know, building a proprietary chip for your proprietary data center is one thing. Making it commercially available in somebody else's data center, that's something different. You know, and that, you know, having done that for 35 years of my career, that's a lot of additional work. And that's why I think the Broadcom relationship here is likely so important to fully realize the potential of this for Meta or for any other major data centers. Uh, I want to actually ask you a separate question. We talked a lot about these circular transactions recently. Uh, the most recent one uh, might involve even, either a Anthropic and Microsoft and NVIDIA. Anthropic is now the, the biggest large language model that has effectively investments from all the, the big three. It's got Microsoft, Amazon, and Google uh, behind it. And, and what you think of these sort of, I don't know if you think of these equity stakes as mm -hmm. vendor financing or not. Yeah, you know, I just think the quality of the revenue in these circular transactions is less critical. You know, if I'm committing my capital for you to buy my product, mm, that's not as good as you committing your capital to buy my product. So I think any form of that, the quality of that revenue just isn't as high. You know, that said, I think, you know, the balance sheet of these companies are very strong and they're trying to enable and leverage those balance sheets uh, in uh, creative ways. But, you know, I think markets need to decide how valuable is that real revenue, right, as a result of that circular nature that they have. You know, for one, you know, if they uh, become too extreme, I don't think it's good for markets overall. You know, but clearly moving forward, you know, this has been a creative way to, you know, enable further capital be deployed in the AI sector. Um, real quick, in terms of just who could, who could win this game, let's take the chips out of it. I'm curious what you think of these new large language models. We had Mark Benioff say that he's now moved over to Gemini. He thinks it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. You know, Anthropic just came out with a, a, an upgrade. I think we'll probably see something from ChatGPT. There's always been this question, is there a moat around these things? So even if they're leapfrogging each other, 
you know, are people going to jump from one to the other? Or is this sort of persistent memory where it knows you or has more data that that's what's going to keep you in there? Well, I, I'm thrilled to see, you know, new innovations here. And, you know, the, uh, you know, everybody has said the recent Gemini and Google model, I have some of my folks looking at it, you know, it looks very encouraging. You know, that said, I think making larger, large language models, you know, is finding more diminishing returns. You know, I think uh, dedicated models and multi-model experiences, mixture of experts, you know, I do believe that science is showing that that's probably a more likely area for the next breakthroughs to occur. And I think LLMs themselves, you know, will give way to other forms of knowledge representation, you know, that will be the next okay. breakthroughs for learning, for AI. And I think, right. you know, the idea of super intelligence just based on bigger models, you know, I think is yep. very suspect. I think there's going to be very Pat, exciting. Pat, what do you wish you